In this question down here, which pertains to the reaction shown over here to the right, it asks, what is the major product of this reaction? The correct answer is A. And once again, if you'd like to know why, I'll show you right now on the board. This question features an excellent example of exceptionality to the three questions that I asked to determine if a reaction is going to go SN1, SN2, E1, or E2. That's all based upon a very specific circumstance. Let me tell you what I'm talking about. If we look at this uh, molecule and we treat it with this nucleophile slash base, if I were to go through my traditional questions, I'd of course begin with the first one. Is that carbon atom, the one that's bound to my leaving group, in this case a bromine, primary, secondary, or tertiary? Well, that carbon atom is bound to a carbon up top, a carbon to the left, and a carbon to the right. That is a tertiary carbon. Now remember that tertiary carbons, when they're subjected to substitution or elimination conditions, will go either SN1, E1, or E2, depending on what the nucleophile slash base is. Let's take a look at our nucleophile slash base. Is it strong or weak? Well, I've got a sodium bound to an OH. I can think of that sodium as effectively reacting as if it were just a negative charge. That is a localized negative charge on oxygen, so it is strong. Strong nucleophile slash bases do two reactions, either SN2 or E2. So I can cross off the SN1 and the E1. All I have left is E2. I don't have to ask the third question. Nevertheless, I will just for the sake of fun. Is my nucleophile slash base a nucleophile or a base? Well, that is smaller than ethanol. So normally, it would behave as a nucleophile if it could and do an SN2 reaction. However, in this case, it cannot. The reason is because this leaving group is bound to a tertiary carbon. Even if you have a really hot nucleophile, really hot nucleophile is not going to be able to get in here and fit into that hole to kick off a bromide because a tertiary carbon is too encroached by three carbon bodyguards around him to allow a nucleophile to come in and do it. So it will not do an SN2 reaction. As a result, the only option left for it is an elimination. At this stage, this, uh, this hydroxide, which is going to behave as a base, because that's all it really can do, could do an elimination by removing this hydrogen, dumping these down and forming a double bond across here to kick off the bromide. Or it could do an elimination by grabbing hydrogen up here. Now, if it grabbed a hydrogen on this methyl, and of course, there are three hydrogens on the ends of each of these methyls, uh, you'd get the exact same product. So it doesn't matter which of these hydrogens we pick. Which of those uh, products is going to be the major product? Well, if I were to grab this hydrogen down here, thrust these electrons down here like a uh, door on a hinge, it would close to form a double bond, kick off this bromide. That would be answer C. If in contrast I grab this hydrogen, dump the electrons down and form a double bond here to kick off the bromide, that would be answer A. Which of those is going to be the correct answer? Well, as it turns out, both of them can and probably will form. But the more favorable product is the one that is more substituted. That is, has the more internal carbon-carbon double bond according to Zaitsev's rule. Hence, this hydroxide is going to come in here, grab that hydrogen, dump these electrons down, kick off the bromide in one fell swoop, E2 style, and form this as my major product. So the correct answer is A.